Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar. The CSA year in review and um, yeah, what a crazy year. This is our last webinar of this year and um, today is a special one. I'm very happy that my teammates Julia and Alexandra are also part of uh, the webinar today. Uh, crazy, more than two years and now the day is there. We are one webinar together and um, Someone is missing today. Sebastian is unfortunately sick. Uh, he won't be here today, but if you have technical questions during the webinar, you can um, ask them, of course. Stefan will be in the background and ask um, and answer your questions. So no worries, we're here. And um, yeah, maybe this is your first webinar um, of the CSA. My name is Maike and I'm responsible for the marketing things and the events at the CSA. And um, yeah, we have official partners. Um, even if it is a CSA webinar with CSA speakers, I would like to thank our partners of the CSA live webinars. It's Harlan and the Martian. Thank you for your support during the whole year. And um, if you want to get more information about them, you can download our sponsoring booklet in the um, download section and um, get more insights of Harlan and the Martian. And, Thank you again both for your support. And it is the last webinar and of course we need some housekeeping rules for today. Um, you're muted during the whole webinar, but um, we have two options today. Um, how you can ask your questions. You can raise up your hand and ask your questions live or you can use the chat function, submit your questions and uh, we will read them out loud and answer them. But of course, we would be happy if you use the live function and ask your questions live. But it's up to you which function you want to use today. And yeah, of course, we have a challenge for you. Um, we want to know your key facts, learnings, or takeaways. Share them via social media, send them to us. It's up to you. But uh, let us know what you think about uh, the webinar today. And before Julia can start, um, we have a little survey for you. I would like to start now with the survey. Just one minute. Um, we want to know what's your level of expertise with the CSA? You have uh, four options. Please choose one um, and we will see how the result is. The server will run a few seconds. 
Yeah, that looks good. Oh, that's interesting. I will share the results. Yeah, you see them? <laughs> now uh, I will head over to Julia who started the presentation. Um, and yes, you will hear me doing the webinar with the live questions or at the end. And um, I wish you a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Maike. Do you see my camera? Do you see me actually? Is my picture there? Can you see me? I have the doubt that yes, now, right? I think you can see me now. Perfect. And I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Do I share my screen now? Uh, yes, I will. Is that working now, finally? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bear with me because actually I'm not so much used to webinars yet as I just have been presenting on stage uh, the years with the CSA. So I would like to welcome you to our webinar of today, the CSA Year End Review. Good morning, good evening from wherever you're joining. We have quite international people here in this webinar. And the aim for this webinar today is basically to show you our major activities of the year. Uh, of course, everything in the spirit of making email better in order to enhance the quality of emailing, uh, but not so much as a proof of work and just, just as providing this, into, uh, this um, overview, but more for you to know to get more insights, to get deeper insights about how you can use the CSA for your daily work. So in order to improve your uh, commercial emailing. So this is the aim for today. And I'm glad actually, we have no greenhorns in, in this webinar. It, it's no one who's completely green. We just have experts and um, attendees with basics and solid knowledge. So I will quickly go over the really basic stuff and uh, we're going to go deeper into uh, the detailed uh, stuff which is probably more interesting for you. So the CSA is all about email. We love email but email is dead. Not. We all know that. I think we in this webinar we all know that email is not dead but there are still those rumors around. Email is highly relevant and there are more than 4 billion email users uh, worldwide and the number is growing. There is 96% of consumers checking their emails every single day and there's 73% of consumers mentioning email as their preferred marketing channel. If you would like to get more insights, we quite like the website emailsnotdead.com. Just visit this website and take a look. It's quite nice. Um, yeah, the basic stuff. Uh, it's still re relevant because the activities which uh, we're going to look at later on are all closely aligned to our mission. And this is really important for us. And whenever we set up a new activity, we always look at the fact, is it really closely aligned to our mission? So I cannot emphasize that enough here. We create quality standards, that's number one. We enable quality standards, so we really want to, to, uh, yeah, to take them live. <laughs> and we promote uh, new technologies for commercial emailing in order to make email more effective and more secure. But actually, where do we come from? Again, as we have complete ex experts and people with solid knowledge in here, just a few sentences about that. So uh, within ECO, the Association of the Internet Industry, there was a group of um, security people uh, of mailbox providers working on uh, increasing spam filtering or increase, increasing uh, the, the quality of spam filtering, fighting spam. And they came to the conclusion actually that this is not possible in a really effective way without consulting senders. 
And um, so they approached the uh, DDV, the German Dialogue Marketing Association, and the paperwork was set up to create the CSA, the Certified Senders Alliance, in 2004. But you all know that, I know. Uh, so as said, the CSA scope of work really relates closely to the mission of the CSA, as the CSA was built as a neutral interface between email senders and receivers of email um, and as a protected space. They had to be set up those, um, yeah, those quality criteria. And actually from the nine criteria in the beginning, we I think we're up to nine pages right now, we continuously updated those uh, criteria and we did so um, in, in 2022 as well. But before going into those details, uh, I would like to show you what we do above and beyond uh, quality criteria, because we do not only stick to the paperwork in, in a kind of boring way and maybe in a way that people do not understand the criteria, but we try to provide more expert knowledge uh, about the criteria so people are really aware about why we actually um, have those criteria in place as we do not invent them, but they are aligned to what the industry needs. So let's start with the live webinars. Maybe as this webinar is the last one uh, of this year, but we have had really, really many interesting live webinars involving many international experts, as you see all those uh, faces here. And um, yeah, those webinars were about, of course, sharing expert knowledge. And I cannot thank those speakers enough for sharing their knowledge and time with us. And also for, um, yeah, being able to, to provide different perspectives on certain topics, to provide practical advice. And of course, just to bring also the, the email industry uh, together as much, much as we can online. Uh, we also set up a YouTube channel as we always got those questions. Where can I find the webinar of this and this topic? Um, and we agreed on just uh, ordering, putting those webinars in order. As you see below uh, by year, you can, you can even look at the recordings and uh, whatever you have a topic in mind, just have a look uh, on those um, on this channel and maybe we already have a webinar uh, recording in place about the topic of interest for you. Uh, when I took the screenshot, we had one follower, <laughs> one subscriber. I think we have a little more now, but it's brand new. So um, just feel free to subscribe there to make sure that you do not miss if we upload new content. This is not only about webinars, we can upload other uh, interesting videos and we will in uh, this YouTube channel. Yes, we also worked on a new directive for permissible email marketing. So maybe some of you still remember this one. Um, this was a paper version and it's the 2016 um, version and we updated this one. So it's not live yet. Anyway, I can uh, present it as a topic of 2022 as we have been um, working on the content and the content is finalized. It's just not launched yet because we do not plan to have a paper version. We just we are got just going to put the content online. Of course, why? Because we need to save paper, but also because uh, we like the uh, possibility to update the topics whenever we want. And uh, I would like to give you just a short overview about uh, the content. So it's basically related to permission, of course, consent and the famous exception of the existing customer relationship, uh, opt out, legal notice, also uh, processing of data by service providers, tracking and profiling in newsletters. Uh, and we also featured other countries such as UK and Switzerland. And of course, there's going to be a part about uh, sanctions. So what's the difference between the legal part of the CSA criteria and this uh, directive? Well, the CSA, of course, um, has a limited 
a version of what is really the law in this and that country and basically sticks to basic criteria related to the um, to the GDPR. And in this uh, marketing directive, we would like to provide you just further insights and really detailed insights um, about uh, certain topics. And now I think we have been going beyond and above uh, the CSA criteria, but now we're going straight to the point. And having that said, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Alexandra. Alex, the stage is yours. Thanks, Julia. Okay, hi everybody. Now it's uh, my turn to make you familiar with the updates we undertook last year. So we had two regulations updates, one in January and one in October. In January, we go for an amendment of the CSA criteria, which is the first point I will introduce you to. And we also updated the rules of procedure. Coming to the CSA criteria, which have been amended in January, I will stick to the main topics. The first one is the TLS secured connection. In the past, it was just a recommendation to have TLS secured connections when sending emails. And yeah, for us, it was time to make this mandatory. So that was the first major change that took place this year. The second major change is related to the DCAM alignment. So we decided to introduce an obligation for a relaxed DCAM alignment. So everybody is hopefully aware that we have a implementation period of 12 months, which will end in January next week, next year. So please be prepared. And if you haven't made the adjustments on your side, it's still one month to go to be compliant with the new regulation here. Um, additionally, we decided to make some more clarifications and specifications in the recommended part of the criteria when it comes to the DKIM alignment, for instance, just also extend the alignment to the email from header to the list header, etc. So if you want to have some more details here, look into the criteria. And the third major point of the update of the technical criteria is the introduction of the host verification token. So of course, for many years, having the sole control over the outbound email service is key. I think there is no question about that. And we thought about a new way to verify that the senders really have the sovereignty of the email service. So one way for us is the host verification token, which has been introduced in the January amendment of the technical criteria. As mentioned, on the other hand, we amended the rules of procedure. More concretely, we focused on the temporary suspension of individual IPs with the clear aim to optimize the procedures we have in the interest of the sender and yeah, also to broaden the scope of suspending individual IPs. Just for those who are not part of the CSA for many, many years in the past, it was like a kind of exception when there was a need to temporarily suspend a sender just to stick to individual IPs. And we really want to go the way that the temporary suspension of individual IPs comes more regularly in case we are in need of a temporary suspension. So. We looked at the scenarios and the use cases, we clarified them and we expanded them. That's the first good news for you. And the, on the other hand, we took a look at the procedures and we thought it's good to go to the complaints office here and to have the option that the complaints office is deciding in this case to shorten the duration of proceedings. Of course, for you, there is a kind of safeguard if a sender thinks that we are wrong in our decision, there is the right to ask for a decision by the certification and complaints committee. So this was the first round of regulations update in 2022. Coming to the latest update, which we undertook in October 2022, 
it was related to the technical criteria of the CSA only. The first major change we undertook was the implementation of the option to park IP addresses. What does that mean? So you have to provide the IP addresses to the CSA. That's something all of the senders are aware of. But we thought it's good to have a kind of decision for the senders to say, okay, this is an IP I will use later on, or this is an IP that had been used by a customer and I just want to yeah, park it and use it for another customer many years ago or a month ago, whatever. So we have the option to park the IP addresses that are not in use. So the first good thing for you is we eliminate the risk that you forget to mention the IP address again to us. That's a good thing. And the other good thing is if you go for the host verification token, in that time you're just um, starting to use the IP address the first time you can implement the token and then everything is done from your side. So there is no need to go back and forth and all that things around. So we really hope that is helpful for you to have this parking option. Coming to the second main topic of the autumn update that's um, related to the verification of the sole control over your outbound service. Um, after introducing the option for the host verification token, we implemented another way to verify that you have the sole control, and that is by putting your sender's name into the who is entry. And if you go that road, please make sure that the sender's name is the same as it is in our contract. So be really strict on there and don't think there's a kind of leeway. So for our checks, we need to be very precise here. And last but not least, we amended the DKIM alignment regulations, um, meaning we clarified them that DKIM alignment is um, kind of only mandatory if your customer has its own brand related company related or organization related domain for sending emails so um, in case there is no brand related company related or organization related domain there is no need for the relaxed DKIM alignment and what we also implemented because we know it's kind of challenging to have all the things um, aligned in regard to DKIM. If we see a violation of this criteria, this will lead to a notification, but further on, it will not be a reason for further sanctions, such as publication of notifications or the temporary suspension stuff around. So we really hope to have a way now for you to be able to work with the kind of criteria and get the support you need from this end. Thank you, That's Alex. The paperwork. <laughs> the paperwork. I'm trying to go on with the slides and it doesn't work. Uh, now it works. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. And um, as I said in the beginning, I mean, the, the paperwork is, uh, is very important, of course, uh, in order to know what we're talking about and what exactly are uh, the quality criteria. Are there any questions, Michael, or should, we, should I move on? You can move on. I can move on, there are yes. no questions. Okay, <laughs> whenever you have questions, jump, just jump in, raise your hand or uh, place them in the box, please, and we answer them as we go. So <clears throat> now, um, of course, the uh, certification is one of our major um, topics always because um, the self regulation uh, we aim uh, for is just working if we have those quality criteria really in place and this how we do it is, is with certifying senders. Um, so we have nine certifications in this year up to now. So maybe there is one more or less, but uh, it's not going to change uh, now very much. Um, and 
this number is, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a very usual number. So we have from the eight years I am here now, we always have around uh, from eight to 10 certifications uh, a year. So this is a very healthy number. Uh, in terms of qualified leads, this is, we had more leads in the years before. And uh, I called it qualified leads now because we have changed the um, filtering of leads as we have put more questions uh, on the website, for example, to make sure we just really get the qualified um, uh, applications for the CSA. What we do with the other ones, with the other ones, I mean, for example, the yoga sto studio next door or really centers who don't own the IP or who are just too small. We guide them to certified um, ESPs, of course. And so we can work more effectively within the CSA and dedicate more time to um, the centers who are really qualified. Uh, the conversion rate of 14%, as I said, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty healthy for us um, as we do not have the pressure to uh, get uh, senders certified, uh, but we have the luxury to just certify them if they really comply with the quality standards. And this is the good thing that we're not, um, that quality standards with the CSA are not compromised by our growth. So, um, as a certified center, as you're no, not green, but you have basic solid knowledge and expert knowledge, you know that after being certified, you cannot lay back and just relax and say, okay, I have the CSA certification and um, I can do whatever I want now. Uh, of course, our aim is to maintain the quality of the certification and um, yeah, also uh, for you as a sender to provide you first by um, transparency about your sendings, right? By letting you know, uh, giving you insights about your sendings and really uh, drawing your attention to the problems you have, to problematic IPs, problematic DKIMs, problematic customers. So you have the knowledge in order to increase your quality in order to work with customers and to know exactly where, where you have to work and, and what's exactly the problem. And we have been investing quite some time in um, yeah, making this CSA certification monitor better in this year. Of course, this is the part from Sebastian right now. I'm taking over, so please bear with me when I need to read some notes here, as I'm not really the expert for that topic, but I will try. Uh, we had a first release in April 2022. There was also a whole webinar about the first um, release. Uh, the main part of that release was to uh, gather everything together. So to, to um, put the reputation management, which we already had in the certification monitor, uh, together with the IP management and the account management functions. So certified senders just have one tool and find all the information in there. And also the provision of the token management, um, Alexandra just mentioned the host verification criteria. So the token for, for this um, criteria were also handed out in the certification monitor. You probably all know that. And then just recently, uh, we had a second release. It was in November 2022. And I think the webinar about it was on 22nd of November. Quite a few of you have joined this webinar. I would just go very briefly over the uh, functionalities. We um, we have in here as many, maybe some of you could not join. So there are more deliverability insights. Um, the major change now and the major addition is that we have the worldwide exclusive data from the Eco Complaints Office led by Alexandra in this tool. So you really have just this one point of uh, touch with the CSA and we have enhanced usability functions. Uh, let me start, uh, start with the dashboard. So now you see in here also the total email value, a uh, volume that's new. Uh, you see a status a standard, which means certified up and running. It could be red if uh, you are uh, delisted, for example, and you have exactly what I was saying here, the, the um, 
technical notifications and legal notifications. This is all data from the uh, ECO Complaints Office. And Alexandra is going to talk about that in a minute, but we also changed um, something in uh, the background of the um, Complaints Office, as there is a database now where the certification monitor can all get all the information from. So this is the dashboard. Then we have the statistics part. We have optimized search and filter functionalities in here. Also, um, if uh, down there there's, there's a, um, a bar showing problematic IPs and uh, DECIMs. I don't have it on the screenshot here, sorry. Um, all listed by all above the threshold of 0.3% spam complaint rate and starting with the um, IPs or DECIMs with the most volume. So we try to really get your, draw your attention to the problematic ones uh, first. And down there, you can also switch between IP and DECIM as you like in order to, uh, yeah, just have a look at problematic IPs or DECIMs as you like. Of course, everything you can download as a TSV file as well. Yeah, and as I said, the new function, the really new function here is the complaints uh, reporting. And in here you can uh, see uh, notifications and the reasons for the notica notifications. You can see where are your major issues if you need to um, rather talk to problematic customers or more lo look at your um, technical settings first. And again, you can download everything as a TSV file. Last but not least, the IP management. Uh, we have some new functions here in terms of usability and data. So um, if a test is failed, we provide additional information now why this test is failed. So we get better insights in order to yeah, get this, sorry, get this um, IP uploaded again. And also we added a functionality for um, bulk actions. So for example, before you could also upload um, IPs, like many IPs <laughs> at once, but now you can also park and uh, delete them as a bulk action. So this is more easy for you. Yes, and this uh, certification monitor is of course our first uh, goal to show you trans transparency about your sendings to help you to help yourself in order not to run into problems uh, with the CSA and with the CSA criteria. But if you um, run into problems, there are rules of procedure which apply, of course, because we have to keep quality promise in front of our ISP partners. And having that said, I would like to hand over to Alexandra again. Yeah, when it comes to applying the rules of procedure, it's up to you, uh, to us, to the Eco Complaints Office to go ahead. Um, in terms of the update of the Complaints Office, I really like to start with our major highlights, so to say, in this year. And this is that we yeah, were able to have a new tool for our report handling, our CSA compliance monitor. So not the certification monitor, but the compliance monitor which allows us two major things. The first thing it allowed for easing up our internal processes, kind of double work that needed to be done in the past or manual work now could be done automated, which really helps us. For instance, um, looking at the reference Julia made before in the certification monitor and the information regarding complaints data, for those of you who are aware and know the so-called CLIP, the customer login portal we used in the past, um, there was some kind of basic information on reports and just some insight for you in the past. We really need to do the work twice, having our own database and information in there and then go to the next tool and enter the basic information. Nowadays, having a completely new tool with additional possibilities and options for our report handling, documentation and statistics gathering, we can give you more details in regard to the procedures we have. We can exchange the information automatically and I really think it's helpful for both of us. 
for us when doing our daily work and for you to have a bigger picture of the compliance situation. And currently we are aware that you are already using this functionality because we have some queries from TSA senders who just yeah, stumbled across some reporting data in the certification monitor and then coming back to the team and asking some specific queries on the current cases here. So we like it and we really hope that you like the information you have provided right now via the certification monitor. Coming to some data at the next slides. Um, last year we saw a little decrease. I'm just waiting a second. I'm waiting too, Alexandra, sorry. Um, <laughs> no worries. It, it doesn't work I, anymore. <laughs> Not very fast, at least. Happens. As said, no worries, but I think it's better to wait and to have the graphics and my talking together. So um, I made a comparison of the numbers of complaints we had this year, January to November, with the last year. And what you can see is that we have a slight increase, uh, decrease in regards to the notifications we have to send to the Senders right now. On the other hand, we see almost the same ratio when it comes to the dismissed complaints. So, yeah, just not a really kind of trend, just to make you aware and give you some insights. So, currently, until November, we had about 705 notifications and eight cases which were merged to one case so to speak so the same sending same brand same esp so of course we just notify one sending once which is quite new due to our new tool is that we can give you some more information about the additional complaints we received in the past which were related um, to complaints without any proceeding. So in the past, we were not able to gather detailed statistics on that, but now we can. So Julia can go ahead to give you some insight what happened in the back end, so to speak, the, the reports we received, which are not forwarded to the certified senders. The first um, thing is about reports without any procedure, but with a CSA context. So this year we had about 260 complaints we received with the CSA context, meaning that we have a CSA sender, which were not submitted to the senders for two reasons. The first reason is a missing authorization of the complainant. So just a kind of uh, reminding stuff. We are only allowed to send you the complaints we receive if we have an authorization because we are asking for the permission data which is personal data so we need to go a specific legal way to do that and if we do not get this kind of authorization of course we are not providing you the relevant complaints we receive on the other hand there's a scenario that there might be a complainant which is sending um, one report which is referring to difference email the person received in the past coming to one sender one brand just different emails at one time submitted as a report which for us means we don't want to borrow you the stuff from weeks ago or something like that we took only the actual one provided and make a case out of that one so that's the reason why we had about 216 complaints without proceeding in total, but with CSA context. On the other hand, that's the bigger chunk you see here is about 1000 reports we received by our official reporting channels dedicated for the CSA with reports that actually did not have a CSA context after analyzing um, the email we received as a report. 
meaning that we have the situation that the XCSA complaints header is mis misused to some extent. We also saw the scenario that um, the headers of our CSA senders have been misused. Just copy pasted them and just try to make a kind of fake header, which means at the first glance, the recipient may think it's coming from a CSA sender, but having a deeper analysis, you see it's not coming from a CSA sender, but from a bulletproof server or something like that. So that's one chunk in this big bar you see. And the third main reason for having reports without a CSA context is the simple one that someone is misusing our official CSA reporting channel, just knowing, okay, there is a reporting channel for unsolicited emails. I just put everything in there. So that's also one reason. Coming back to the notifications, um, in total 705 until November, what we really see is that the lion's share of reasons for notifications is related to the violation of the legal criteria and having a more detailed look from our side in the legal criteria i really like to yeah remind you and to recommend you to come back to the basics again please have an eye on the completeness of permission data if we ask for permission data Please make sure that we receive all the relevant information, date, URL, consent declaration, text, etc. Everything that's needed to, yeah, to make clear that the sending was allowed. Also, please work with your customers when it comes to the legal notice. We still see a lot of issues here, so I really can recommend to go back here, have a look in our information papers and the criteria. The new um, directive for email marketing, which we will launch in January, there's also a bigger part related to the legal notice. And we really hope it's helpful for you to solve this issue. And then feeling like a broken record to some extent, look at the wording of the consent declaration. And then we really hope to have the number of notifications decreased in the future years. But please don't forget to look at your technical setting as well. As you can see, at about 12% of our notifications were related to legal and technical criteria. There is a yeah, not only one technical issue, it's a lot of um, things coming together. Make sure your technical setup is compliant with your CSA criteria. For those of you who yeah, participated in the last year's webinars related to the review of the year or to our CSA summits, um, you might remember that we always had some funny quotes when it comes to the update of the complaints office. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to give you some funny quotes this year, which is um, the main reason for that, that the recipients get more and more angry if they receive unsolicited commercial emails. So um, yeah, if I really like to select some quotes, I had to stick to a lot of curse words and I don't want to do that. So just as a kind of call to action for you, take the criteria seriously to have happy recipients to help your customers with good email marketing and yeah, to help to make the email marketing getting better and to comply with the quality standards. That's the update from the complaints office so far. Thank you very much, Alexandra. And um, I mean, the fact that we cannot even share quotes, we've really been looking at quotes we would like to share and we agreed that we could not share them, uh, shows that recipients get really, really angry. And this goes back to everyone's reputation. And just think about the um, how angry they get on social media or other channels. So this is really something uh, we should all take very serious. 
And yeah, I, I would like to close the main part of this session uh, with a slide um, showing how everybody wins because this is our aim. Um, the CSA works as a self-regulation for um, enhancing uh, quality of, of emailing and this self-regulation only works if everybody wins, of course, because everybody needs to participate. So starting with the brand, um, Depending on the ISP, we do we cannot we have such a bunch of different ISPs and we cannot really say okay those are the this is this and this advantage at that and that ISP, but the advantages differ between ISPs. Just to give you an example, for example the the rate limits uh, some ISPs uh, set those off for certified senders. So during times like uh, Black Friday, Cyber Week, whatever, we just <laughs> experience those times, um, brands have a reliable audience reach resulting in better marketing results. As an email service provider, of course, with the CSA trust seal, this is something um, that potential customers um, yeah, just trust because they, they know that uh, certified senders hand, senders, um, hand their emailings with a caution. And as a uh, certified sender, um, you have the possibility to do deliverability monitoring, to offer consulting and enablement to your clients, but also, of course, work with the clients which do not comply with uh, certain criteria. And of course, the IP listing, I mean, just being on, on the certified IP list is a trust seal towards mailbox providers related to um, certain benefits as said. And also one benefit is of course the higher inbox placement rate. Um, and for the mailbox providers, they act as a bouncer for, for users, of course, as we know, and uh, their aim is to, to have happy users and we help them with the trusted sender base and by trust i mean that behind the ip there's a person they know that there is a contract there is a person there's a there's a contact person so they know actually who who am i talking to here and um by speaking as one voice to all senders we we save resources for mailbox providers and for end users or yeah email users basically um, our criteria mean a lot of privacy protection, actually. If you look at them, uh, the legal ones and also the technical ones, they have really many details and aspects in them uh, which pr protect privacy for end users. And at the end of the day, hopefully, they will get like more relevant uh, emails with engaging content um, in the inbox. So this, this is our aim. And this is how everybody wins with the CSA. And we're going to plan more activities going into that direction in 2023, of course, related to our mission, but also, um, yeah, going uh, for that aim. No questions until now, I think. Okay, I'll move on. Finally, the slides move, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> So um, what's, what is really important for the CSA is actually that um, you should get involved and use the CSA uh, for your business. What's really important is please always have a look at the uh, contact information in the certification monitor as this is the uh, communication channel for us where we communicate really major and really relevant updates. Um, so please have an eye on that, that you do not have persons who left the company in there um, because we experience that a lot, that information just doesn't go uh, to the right persons because of this. Um, please let us know about functionalities in the certification monitor you miss. Also, of course, about bugs, but any functionality you would like to see in there um, is is our roadmap. Your ideas and your needs are our roadmap. If you are a certified sender, please join our Slack community as you will get more uh, information and yeah, just engagement uh, on that channel as well. If you are not in there, just drop an email to Sebastian, sebastian.clute at eco.de. 
and um, you can also tell us about topics you would like to see from us for our blog but also within our webinar series and also please dare to be a speaker in our webinar series some of the participants here have been speakers and they've done great so this is how you could get involved uh, or how you can get involved uh, in the CSA. So there are no questions until now, but maybe now after having all that, having heard all that, maybe now you have questions. Please feel free to raise your hand or place a question in the box. No questions from your side. So. We assume that everybody, uh, everything's crystal clear, hopefully. And anyway, we're looking um, forward to receiving any kind of feedback from you or ideas in the next year. And having that said, um, I would like to, of course, now the slide is not working. Now it is. I would like to thank, first of all, the CSA team for your dedication to your work, for your hard work, your engagement in the last year and also i would like to thank you as a certified sender or just uh, an email sender who's very interested in the csa and in um, quality criteria for yeah your interest um, your time today and happy holidays have a great happy healthy new year yeah and all the best take care and bye bye Thank you.